I'm Tree, and this is Project Transparency. It is the early morning descent of the kitty. He says, no, you may not have the bags to go to the farmer's market. And I wash my foot at you. Almost an hour later, and the cat is still in the bag. Kitty configuration 175. So today is a day to talk about actual art things, like in regards to the whole world of the fine art world. Things are doing some changing. I mean, they've been happening for a while, but yeah. But first, the community calendar is basically what it was last week. I don't have anything until September, so, you know, taking the nice and the quiet. Okay, Elaine, so I sent you that article to read because I know how you feel about fabrication and I know about how you feel about artists who use fabricators, which sounds really, really awful when I say it like that. Let's put it this way. Artists who use fabricators and then don't acknowledge and credit their fabricators. So there's a new book that just came out, which I'm going to have to get probably, called The Art of Not Making. And there was an article article on Virgin Online, which I'll put the link in the drawer, about it, a review of it. So for those of you who might not be aware, there are some artists, and the article talks specifically about Jeff Koons and Damien Hirst, who use other people to create their art. Now, fabrication is one of those things that's a little bit controversial sometimes because because is it still the artist's work when the artist doesn't make it? And it's a legitimate question. It's a question we've been talking about for a while in the fine art world. And somebody made a book about it. And there is nothing wrong with artists who, who utilize fabricators. Sometimes you don't have the skill set, sometimes you don't have the space, Sometimes you don't have the equipment. And those are all very legitimate reasons as to why to utilize a fabricator. However, when we're getting to a point where artists barely make sketches, barely have an idea, and then go to the fabricator, we're talking about something completely different. So, for those of you who are not privileged to Lane's talking about things like I am, this is what Lane said in response to this article. I have mixed feelings on this. It's one thing if you don't have access to some pieces of equipment that's necessary for creating your art due to expense or hey, I live in an apartment and my neighbors would kind and my neighbors would be kind of ticked off at me for burning the building down with a pl with a plasma cutter. But if you're going but if all you're doing is generating ideas and telling someone else to design and fabricate the piece, better give them credit because they're doing all the real work. It seems lazy to have someone else make your, your artwork for you. As for art schools moving away from teaching practical skills and just teaching how to conceptualize something, personally the most valuable things I learned in art school were the practical making skills. Without that, I would have just paid a whole lot of money to skip class and sit in the library reading. Now, a thing for those of you who don't know Lane in real, in real life, Lane is a discovery learner. Lane is also a kinesthetic learner. And that's where part of my problem in the taking away of practical skills in art school lies. Because I also, it's like while I'm a visual learner, I am also a kinesthetic learner. I learn by doing things. And sometimes I just think with my hands. If you've watched my video for any duration of time, I talk with them too. My response to Lane, because we were having this conversation on Facebook like you do, like, you know, normal people who don't aren't attached to video cameras. I also think the learning, the physicality of making is really important because kinesthetic learning styles. For those of you who don't know, I was a college educator for many a year and was doing a PhD in art education, so I know something about learning styles. The material tells you a lot while you're working with it. Shouldn't we work in cooperation with our materials rather than trying to subdue and rule them? But yeah, it's more complicated always. If they're just making a part because equipment, honestly, I still think you give the per you give them credit as fabricator. If they take 
if they make the whole thing because craftsperson and you're conceptualizing, then they're your collaborator. And you might want to consider that you're being a classist asshat. And unfortunately, even the article that was talking about the art of not making is privileging a certain notion of artist. The artist that exists in a vacuum that it's like an early abstract expressionist version of the artistic genius who works in a vacuum. And that's a problem for me because our art is the culmination of our experiences, of the people we've known, the people who've taught us, the people who have influenced us. So saying that you make something singularly and on your own is incorrect. But also in art schools, some art schools, moving from physicality to to purely conceptualizing. In some art schools, taking away that physicality of learning, of learning to create with your hands as well as your mind, because in the article there was a comment from one of the people in The Art of Not Making about, there was a comment in The Art of Not Making from one of the fabricators who is, that's the thing, it's like most fabricators are also artists themselves, so calling them artisans and craftspeople is actually diminishing their own work just because they have the technical abilities to be able to make the things themselves does not lessen the fact that they're an artist. Hi, I know how to do woodworking and metalworking and how to spin my own fiber and stuff. If I didn't do anything else with it, we could call me an artisan or a craftsperson. But once you start integrating it into, into conceptualized art, then it takes on a different meaning. But the, this person was talking about how the people he fabricates for, and one of the people he fabricates for is Jeff Koons, I think. It's either him or Damien Hirst. Bring in sketches and ideas, and then we work on them together. And it's like, guess what? That's not fabrication. That's collaboration. Any fabrication is going to be an interpretation of the person who brought you the idea. So you're always going to be a collaborator. But, you know, people choose to be a, considered a collaborator or not. But in taking away the possibility of learning those things from, from future artists is a problem. Knowing what a material can do, even if you never again use the material and you always have somebody else fabricate the things for you, is still valuable learning. So I'm not really fond of this conception that fabricators are somehow less than artists and that fabricators don't deserve to be credited in the artist's work. Even if it's just a, you know, they put a little tag on it, says artist X fabricated by Y. That's all it would require. And then it would let other artists know who maybe want, need somebody to fabricate something from them, who to talk to. I don't know. I, th I don't think we hear enough from the people who fabricate art for artists who, for some reason, it seems like they don't want to get their hands dirty. Do, pe do these artists who don't do anything themselves even touch any art materials ever? I don't know. It's, it's, it requires more thought. It always does. It's always way more complicated than it looks. And Lane? Tell me what you think. Tell me your thoughts. This is an important conversation, I think. It's a, an important conversation for artists and the art world and what it means to be an artist and what it means to create art. So, yes, tell me you, your thoughts and things. And anybody else who is watching this, I'm sorry this was a very, you know, art world sort of thing, but I'm sure you've got ideas too. Read the article and leave comments. Bye. And that's my cat. It's the light, the light.